Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the North San Diem Sewer Authority Special Work Session, Monday, August 29th, 2022. It is 6.02 p.m. Welcome, everybody. Roll call. Um, Ken. Present. Tim. Here. Danny. Present. Ron. I'm here. Brian. Present. Janet here and Tony's running late. Okay, declarations of conflicts of interest. Is there any? Hearing none, any announcements? Not hearing any? Administrative discussion points. And oh. says, Can I go back? Yeah, go ahead. Announcements. I did forget that I, I wanted to say, um, for those of you I hadn't already told, we have some transition in our office and our economic development program through community services. Tamara Getch, who's been our community services director for a long time, I want to say 12 years, has taken the job of the business services uh, director at Marion County. So we will be sad to lose her as of September 1st, and we are actually going to be receiving uh, Chris Epley, who will be acting in capacity for uh, at least the interim. And I imagine that he will apply for the position once it becomes available. But just wanted to let everybody know there's a little bit of transition in, in our department. Doesn't really make much of a difference for how we're serving you, but just wanted to, you to be aware. There goes the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. With Epley, <laughs> hey, I, Chris and I, we get along great. He's he's really good. He is really, really talented. You can tell him I said that. He'll maybe he'll laugh. <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, again, administrative discussion points. NSSA and Cog IGA draft. Do we want to turn that over to McRae? Put you on the spot, McCray. Hi, everybody. It's nice to see you. Hopefully, you've had the opportunity to review the draft contract. Um, at this point, uh, we are proposing that we will have, we're in the process of um, recruitment for staff who will ultimately um, serve as your staff person, staff liaison. Um, but as part of our uh, IGA proposal is um, using a lot of the staff that are already within COG, um, like our grant um, administration staff. We have staff who have been doing grant writing and administration for years. Um, our support staff that will help with meeting minutes and um, you know just our general structure, getting our meeting minutes out to you all, um, getting agendas out. Um, and then uh, a one point um, staff person. For now, that's me until we hire that person. Um, Scott Daston wants to, our executive director at COG wants to work with you all a little bit on um, some visioning work, strategic planning work also, but we can discuss that at a later date. So I guess um, if the board has any questions about the IGA, uh, we can discuss that now, um, or it seems like the next step, if you don't have questions, would be for you all to discuss sending this to your legal counsel uh, for review. Um, so if you have substantive questions, we can talk about those. And if you'd like to talk about action. Um, Denny. Yeah, McCray, thanks. Um, I'm wondering what your target is for having the individual hired and then following that uh, when they might be available to us for support. I think we hope um, to start our recruitment's closing, it has closed. So it, we're in the process of reviewing our applicants. Um, so I would think we could potentially scheduling wise interview in the next couple of weeks and hire, you know, everything goes well right, the end of the month and have them attend um, October potentially. And then I see that transition um, 
being months though, that I'm still going to participate and be answering questions and helping that person get up to speed with all the work the sewer authority has been doing for the past four years. So thank you. Uh, an ideal, but I think realistically is probably, you know, um, November. Maybe not. We just have to see what our applicant pool looks like. Have you received uh, the check? Mm, I didn't hear, but that's not to say that. Uh, do you mean for um, the NSSA being a member? Yes. Um, I, I, I don't have an answer. I can ask. Okay. I can ask on my phone right now. But back to the IGA, does anyone have questions about the content of the IGA or how we're proposing to provide service to y'all? Um, I do. Okay. So the I'm looking at this, what is this NSA action plan, Excel, cost, hours and cost estimate for project. Mm -hmm. So what I'm seeing is 15 hours a week at $1,300 uh, a week. Mm -hmm. So eight, that, I think that figures out to like $85 an hour. Um, is um, that, explain that? Sure. Um, you know, I mean, it's just a general estimate. When you all were working with Sarah a few months ago, she kind of forecasted out the different scopes of work that needed to happen, the operational plan, the financial policies, the communications, a plan, and then the outgoing effort for communications. So by all means, this is an estimate. I think it will ebb and flow. There will be times when staff are spending more time and when we will see maybe less time. Um, I also sent a summary of uh, staff, um, our hourly wages for the different um, positions. So you'll see under grant writing in the beginning, um, you know, I have six hours, but that will taper off and then that will ramp back up. But I put that in the beginning right now because we have a grant that needs to be applied for. The NSSA has a grant that needs to be applied for by December of this year. Um, uh, finance director, you don't see much time. Community development director, which is myself, not much time, but just, uh, um, but the project manager specialist, that person, their rate is, um, $94 an hour. So uh, you're accurate, Ron, in saying it averages out to about 84, you know, amongst all these different positions. Um, this is the high estimate, but it still fits within the um, salary range that you all discussed a couple of months ago. So the nature of the work that COG and the planner, the, the staff that will be your project manager, will just really ebb and flow. There will be constant work that we're doing for the NSSA, but what that task is and who's involved um, will shift. So is, it, is so this is an umbrella with, with the staff person for the NSSA and, and the shared um, services with, with COG and stuff. So that's- Yeah, within COG. So, right, we're gonna hire someone um, at COG who will serve as your project manager and be your main point of contact and come and facilitate the different discussions around your operational plan and your financial policies and your communication. But then we have two grant writers at COG. They'll be feeding that information and potentially coming. I'd like to have one of our grant writers come to your meeting next month to discuss what we're, proposing uh, for the first grant cycle, which isn't new. I think you all have been talking about the Ford family, but I'd like to just introduce him. But he won't be at every meeting, right? The main the main person that you all would contact would be the program manager. So the idea is there's a lot of things that at, at COG we already do very well. So why not maximize that uh, service? and our um, meetings and helping y'all with meeting agendas, taking some of the load off of you all that have been doing a lot of work um, and move that into our silo at a lower cost and capture that um, and then have our, you know, what's really important, at least one thing I value and think is really important is continuity and you having that point of contact that you call to figure out what needs to happen and that they're coming back and following up and 
you make requests and they circle back with responses and direction. Totally agree. Thanks, Byron. Has his hand up, Denny. Well, I just think it's important. I think McCray and I had this conversation before to understand that that. 84 or whatever the hourly wage is considers all direct and indirect costs. So uh, salary and benefits, it's not just salary. You get that wrong? Yeah, I just, I'm just kind of, I guess uh, I understand that part, but then the hours, because the, the NSSA person, they're going to have hours that they're working too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what are they going to work the five hours a week and, and, and uh, the cog work 10 or is this here? That's what the, I guess that's where I kind of, I'm kind of. I, just let me see if I can help you out. I think okay. cog's going to help us out now with their, the staff members they have. And until they get somebody hired, then it's going to change, right, McCray? Yeah, essentially, um, what is what you see right now is what it's going to look like. Um, and we are in the process of hiring someone. When you look at that spreadsheet, there's project manager specialist. And that person in that um, spreadsheet has 6.5 hours a week that would be dedicated to the NSSA. So that will be me. Right, like that person will ultimately be me at the future meeting when they're hired, coming and facilitating the meeting, then uh, and doing work in the office during the week, um, preparing, um, responding to the questions and direction that you all have for them. So the project manager is part of that 15 hours in the spreadsheet. So there's all sorts of services and work that need to happen to support um, the NSSA right now. There's administrative work, there's getting your meeting minutes done, there's getting your agenda set, there's getting it set out early. It's the making sure all the documents are ready and available a week before so that you all have time to review and be prepared, right? And we have the capacity to do that work. Then there's a project manager who's going to play the role of working on the operational plan with you all coming to um, our meetings and having um, staff direction and discussion and then follow up and coming back at your next board meeting or work session to talk about it more. So and then our so, grant, yeah. So here's, here's a question. How many hours did Sarah devote a week to the NSSA? Uh, probably about 20. Or more. Yeah. And yeah. Sarah was doing so that, all the jobs I'm telling you right now. Yeah. So that kind of makes me curious. Is this enough? Is this enough hours or is this uh, for the future or are we looking at more hours in the future or? I think we, we I think I think right now we're confident with our estimate that this is um, an accurate and good starting point. Like Sarah did a lot in a few, few short months of developing a good infrastructure uh, of documents and management, um, the Google Drive and uh, videos, and then where our staff can pick it up. So some of the work she was doing was getting acquainted with the program. So there obviously will be a learning curve for the new person, um, but then once they're up to speed, uh, with the organization and goals and objectives and directives from y'all, I think I think it's reasonable. I don't think, but by all means, we will be reporting to you on our time, um, and you can make any request you want of how you want that to look like. By that we can capture that in the IGA or otherwise, and if we need to um, amend or adjust, we can. You know, say. A year from now, we're finding, gosh, this is a 40 hour a week job. Yeah. Then, then we would discuss that with y'all. Yeah. Well, I would have thought that that would be about what it would be in, in the, right from the get go. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sarah, Sarah did a lot for our website. She did, she put in a lot of time. I mean, yeah. So I don't think it's going to be that much now since we're going to knock a few things 
a few of these ah out at the next meeting, uh, board willing, but, um, and then we can get moving forward. I think Brian's put his hand up there for a while. I was just looking. Brian, go ahead. Brian? So I, there's a couple of things that I just, I'm not quite sure of it. McRae, do you run a 48-week 48, 48 year? Uh, no, we do 52. Well, do you... So if you build 52 weeks in a year, mm -hmm. we don't have nearly enough money to pay just on this account, just on the estimate that you have for this year. Mm -hmm. If we had a 48 week year, we would be at 155,000, almost $156,000. And so, as your treasurer, I need to let you guys know that you're entering into a contract that you don't have enough money for. Um, if it's a 59 week year, $160,000 uh, from just January 1 of 2023 to June 30 of 2025. That's with no annual increase in the rate right. of pay, which you guys typically do in June um, in review of your fees. So Brian, are you, are you figuring that on a, a full-time FTE instead of a part-time? I'm just using a 1310, the value that she gave us, $1,310 a week. For 52 weeks comes to about 70,000. But most, Most people work about a 240 day work year, right? Because you got weekends, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we're what we're working at. Um, well, there's 2,080 hours in a in a year for a full time equivalent. 173.3 hours in a month. In my mm -hmm. way of figuring full time equivalents or part time. There, they're not computing it that way. They're computing it as a weekly cost. Basically, they're going to bill us by the week. $1,310 is what her estimate value is, if, unless I'm not reading the spreadsheet correctly. I thought that it was going to, we were going to get an accounting of their hours and be billed by the actual hours work. Is that correct? Yeah, you are going to be billed by the hours. I mean, we can have it not to exceed if you all wanted. Um, we really built the estimate um, generously with the time. Like I just don't um, see it being every week, the grant writer spending six hours, um, the project specialist. We also yeah. supposed to get but, we're all supposed to have grants. I think what, what, what I'm trying to say is, is if it just planes out at $1,310 a week, which it may or it may not, mm -hmm. if we were just using that as an estimate of what this is going to cost us over time, then we would be exceeding our resources. That's all I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that it would be one individual over another individual, but that would be well, um, 52 times 1310 is $68,120 a year. And we're going to have grants in there too, right, McRae? We're going to just apply and we're going to get them all. <laughs> but, yeah, I like that idea. But, but the, contract, the point was the that we didn't have enough oh, money oh, oh, to pay the, the, the individual. But when I multiply 52 times 1310, it comes out to 68120 and we have a we have one hundred fifty thousand dollars that we're going to have in our bank account. So I'm trying to understand Brian's comment that we don't we can't afford this at thirteen ten a week because the length of the contract goes till June twenty twenty five. Well, we understand that. We also understand that we're going to be going after grants. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Just if past performance is a predictor of future. 
we aren't there, right? So we're approving a contract that we know is going to exceed our means. That's all I'm telling you. That's, that's, that's my job as a treasurer to tell you that, that, <laughs> that if you, you're signing a contract that you don't have full resources for. So that's just a statement. It's not yeah, that we shouldn't do it or should do it. It's just a statement. Okay. The other term, I'm looking at term 11, mm -hmm. insurance. What is your expectation for insurance? On our end? That's what it says, that you expect us to hold insurance. What, what do we need to hold? Um, you would need your attorney, honestly, to advise that. Yes. Hog has insurance. And that's just pretty standard language in our contract that both parties have. Insurance. So you don't have an expectation of the clients that you sign with? It. I don't think they can discuss other clients, can you? Um, we don't ask for... I don't know of an instance in our contract so far where we ask for um, documentation of their insurance and that we want to see it. I think by signing the contract, you're agreeing that you have insurance. But we don't. Mm -hmm. So what kind of insurance are you recommending that we, I mean, what do your other clients have, I guess is the question. Are Again, you talking sorry. bonding? Are you talking workman's comp? What what do you what's the insurance requirement? Unfortunately, I can't speak to that. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So who Fair would enough. we who would we call Scott? About what people About that we go into contracts with? The insurance. Um I can I will find out more for you okay i mean talk, you are welcome to scott it's called scott but yeah we can talk to scott tim and i are seeing scott on wednesday so we can yeah we can talk to him and then when we do send it off to the attorney for review um do we want to just kind of flag that of to see like well for this clause each party shall ensure or self-insure and be independently responsible for the risk of its own liability for claims within the scope. So to see if that self-insure language means that no insurance is covered as the self-insure. That sounds like a great plan to me. Um, Tim and Brian, what do you see in Scott for on Monday? NSSA you, business? You asked us to go to COG to have them look at our financial policies. I made a suggestion that maybe we should, but the board hasn't agreed on that. So are you telling us no, not to do it? I'm saying the board, I can't, I'm saying the board has not agreed to that, making the decision to see him about the financial policy procedures. I personally, on August 3rd, just before the meeting, asked Marion County what they thought of our financial policies and procedures that we've been working on for six months. And in a very short period of time, they came up with something and we need to review it, what Let's they came up with. And, and as Janet and I reported in the last, on that August 1st meeting, there's still a work in progress. We, we didn't say that they were final we actually said in the minutes of the meeting that we anticipated to have them completed by October. Okay, we're not, we're not on there. I just asked, why are you seeing Scott? And you just said about financial policy procedures, the board hasn't agreed to that. And so I made a suggestion, I didn't tell you because I can't make that decision, the board has to. So, um, we're not there on the uh, board policies. I'm not sure the board has to tell us to do our best to, the board gave the committee the job of developing the financial policies. Tim is the not on the committee. Is, is working on 
developing the financial policies. Tim is not on the committee. It was Janet and Janet resigned and the board hasn't made any other decision for Tim to be on there. Janet, will you clarify that please? Clarify what, that Tim's not on it? I never heard Tim's name mentioned as being on the committee at all. I heard you mentioned it a couple of months ago, but I do not remember uh, that at all. Tim, do you remember being placed on the committee initially? I don't recall being appointed to a committee, but I was uh, looking at my uh, duties as vice chair and it says uh, basically uh, I am a officer that does committee work or stuff. So uh, I, I don't know, I, I'm willing to go uh, to review these financial policies or whatever that we put in place, but uh, I don't think there, I was officially appointed on, a, on the committee that I can recall. You were in the initial email that I sent out to Janet about our first meeting. Did you send it out to everybody in the NSSA? No, I sent it out to the three people who were placed on the committee at the meeting, Tim, myself, and Janet. Tim was never on that. So, all right, we're gonna keep going with the, we're gonna, we're not gonna get into that right now. Uh, we're going to, so our, we're, if we're gonna get back on track, I have a question. So are we um, in agreement that it's time to, <laughs> Go ahead and send the IGA on to the attorney and have them look at it, answer uh, the, the question that Brian has about what type of insurance um, we need to have or, or where exactly are we at with that document? I think we can put that on for the, ne uh, for the next uh, board session, which I believe we have set for the 12th. I forgot, this is a work session. Well, just to clarify, there's it's not an action to send something to your attorney. The action occurs when you actually approve it. So that's just a, it's just a movement on to the next phase. So you are welcome to today, if you would like, decide to move it and have the attorney review it and get some feedback. So that way you can be ready to adopt them when your next board session hits. All right, thank you. And I'll contact the attorney. Well, I guess, Ken, we need to get a, 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 a consensus that everybody's ready for that. Make sure that it's. I just, I'm just making a note. Oh, OK. I'll be quiet. Tell me to be quiet. Oh, no, we need you. Go ahead. Go ahead. And. Um... Do we have a, consent, a consensus vote to move this, um, to send it to the attorney? All in favor? Aye. 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 How many no's? Sounds like you got it. Thank you, Kelly. This is how we, now uh, NSA action plan draft. Who? It's part of the agreement with the inner, with the IGA, with the COG. So that's why that was on there. Okay. Hey, and I just want to make one comment about the IGA um, as a funding agreement with Marion County. Um, COG is going to send us a quarterly report, which addresses the items on their scope. And so I sent a form to McRae. It's a one pager that basically just asks her for one or two sentences um, once a quarter that addresses each of the items that are on the scope on exhibit A. Um, and so that just files away. So that way that checks the box. The first one's coming in on October 15th. Right. Thank you. Moving on, the NSSA calendar draft. Larry? 
You're on mute. Yeah, for that, it was just um, it was just some items kind of to help inform um, everybody on different agenda items and just, you know, kind of keep us on track a little bit for what we might be anticipating as it comes up. You know, none of them are hard deadlines, but just as a means to guide us um, and sort of, you know, kind of keep the priorities straight. They're in line with um, with the items that were set out here. I believe it was Sarah or maybe it was McRae that made it um, for this action plan. Um, and so basically I just put that, you know, on the list with the calendar, just so that way we can anticipate some dates coming up and just kind of kind of be able to knock some stuff down. Yeah, we need to we need to get some of this stuff behind us real quick. We've got a lot of people in the community asking questions where we're at. So uh Board member Gander letter. You want to re read your letter? Mr. Gander? Well, I think you sent it out with the packet the first time. Um, my concern is the number of meetings and uh, I think we would do better as members if we broke the large amounts of work we have into smaller pieces and work on them as committees and brought our work every now and again to the staff on Friday mornings to get feedback as to how our work is going and then uh, cut out the Friday morning meetings with the entire board and uh, focus the work sessions to specific topics. Can you read your letter, please? I probably don't feel I should have to read the letter. It was in the... Please read, I'll read it. Um, do what? I don't have it, is it a... When it's, was it spent out? It, it says NSA, NSSA calendar, August, 2022, Mister. That's the document that went out with the agenda back on 823. Hmm. August 16th, you wrote a letter. He goes, I appreciate the work that has been put into this document. It is not the document I have a concern about, but the process we are following. My feeling is the expectations to meet on NSSA issues is too high. Many of the NSSA board members have a variety of other concerns we are volunteering for, be it city councils or local causes. Some have real jobs besides their work for the NSSA. I say this because the meeting outline seems excessive considering the vagueness of the products to be produced. I would prefer an approach that would use a committee format that our administrative policy, standing committees versus ad hoc membership expectations, et cetera, would define. My suggestion is to make the Friday morning meeting a staff meeting where one or two board members meet with staff to go over their committee progress, plan next steps with staff, and help staff complete the report for the next board meeting. The committees I would suggest are admin policy, finance policy, public relations slash communications, grants, projects tracking, tracking project A, tracking project B. There may be others that rank higher based on the Marion County IGA, but these can start the conversation. I would save the board meetings and work sessions for developing our vision for the functions of the NSSA when we have a sewer system, reports from the committee and project updates. Lastly, I would like the board to clarify when a quorum is expected to be present to hold a meeting. 
This should include what types of documents can be presented slash reviewed and worked upon when a quorum is not present. To go through all the effort to arrange a Zoom meeting, get packet documents produced, sent out emails, and have three members show up and five non-members show up is unbecoming and does not respect the time of our staff, our support staff. Um, the NS, since I was asked by Marion County to be a part of this project six years ago, six plus years or whatever, we have never had committees. We have always worked as a whole. Everybody has an opinion. We always got things done in a timely manner. If there wasn't enough people there, we still discussed it. We didn't put the meeting off. We kept going. That's how we got things done. When I see committees and people are not being able to participate in the meetings for whatever reason, and then it's held up. But if we all act as a whole, as we, that we have done for over six years, we get things done. Am I missing something? I like when we work on it in a group. I'm sorry, Denny, you go first. I didn't no, see you. No, that's all right. I, um, if you'll indulge an old saying, you know, um, I'm always reminded about committees that a camel is a horse designed by a committee. And uh, so I feel, number one, uh, that Brian's hit on a lot of real positive points regarding the amount of time we're spending. And sometimes, and I think often we get into the weeds like we're doing tonight, quite frankly, on issues that I'm not sure need that much discussion if everybody's reading the material that went out ahead of time. We don't have a lot of issues to deal with when you look at, at Larry's um, Gantt chart or however you refer to that in terms of, of uh, what we have to do and the timelines associated with completing those tasks. You know, we've got the financial policies, which we're on the downhill side of. We've got communications um, started and there's been a couple of documents on the Google Drive for a while regarding uh, white paper as well as frequently asked questions, which still needs to be fleshed out. Um, we have um, the issues we're talking about tonight, which I think are going to be taken care of rather soon, like at our next actual board meeting in terms of our policies. I just don't think there's that much that we can't all work on things and work on them together so that we have the best product that we can have. So as much as I would like to see time requirements reduced because I do have a life outside of this in the city council, uh, I, I think that if we work effectively together, we don't need to go into a committee format at this time. It's sort of like the financial policies that we haven't really discussed yet. I thought Kelly did a masterful job of reducing what I consider to be a, an overcooked set of of policies that are pages and pages and pages and pages long that don't have a lot of um, material that's that's related to the, the depth and breadth of the organization that we represent today. Okay. Hey, hold that, hold that, Denny. Hold that because that's our next topic. Does anybody else have anything else to say about the letter? Oh. I, I will, uh, I'm going to kind of piggyback off this because I've worked with committees for many years and stuff, and a lot can get done when you spread out all the, all the different areas that need to be taken care of amongst different people. The, the issue that I see here is that we don't have enough people to really create uh, a, a, a bunch of committees or several committees and stuff like that. What you're going to have, what we have is really different people uh, responsible for different parts of, of the organization and doing different duties and stuff like that. That's the only thing I can see that, that is, uh, would be benefit us here. Uh, but, uh, you know, with COG coming in and doing their work, you know, one of our biggest deals is is grant writing. We need to find 
we need a grant writing and stuff. So we need to do that. We're going to have administrative things that need to be looked at. Brian's taking care of the financial end of stuff. So I think uh, more so to uh, designate certain areas that people are responsible for that, or that, that can help organize in certain areas of the deal and deciding what those are is really the more important uh, issue. Uh, Thank you, Ron. Um, anything else? Well, I'd just like to add that, you know, remember in, in a few short weeks, we're gonna have an administrative assistant that's gonna deal with a lot of the things we're talking about tonight. And that person's going to be able to solve a lot of issues that we've spent a lot of time on. And given their experience and training, they'll make quick work of an awful lot of things that we, we sort of struggle with in, in my not so humble opinion. So um, I just think uh, we can evolve as the complexity of our organization dictates depending upon how, for example, the biggest issue I think we have as an organization to figure out is how we're gonna operate uh, project A and project B. W I thought we had made that decision, but it turns out we just had a full blown discussion and I guess it wasn't completely decided. But if we're gonna turn over the operations of the sewer systems for both of those projects to the local communities, then we're gonna become a review and oversight board, which is fine, and a policy board. And I think that's great. I've served on policy boards for 55 years. Uh, and uh, if you've got a good administrative team supporting you, um, you can reduce the amount of time you spend dramatically. And I'll stop preaching, I apologize. No, no apologies. Every, you know, everything, look at it, all opinions matter. Okay, all comments quick, matter. Can I quickly like to add too, sometimes committees just add meetings actually to individuals, not as the group. So it actually can make, make more meetings, obviously. Uh, I thought our financial drafts and stuff were getting narrowed down to a focus point right now myself to where they're supposed to be pretty much uh, done. I appreciate some of the comments that Kelly had put into those those things and the way that she has whittled down some of it to make it a, a well, more concise document, I would say. So between that one and the one with the uh, ATM, the, the ATM. Cog and stuff, what's yeah, that? Let, let me make it official. Okay. Okay. Financial policy draft. <laughs> NSA, NSSA full financial policies. On August third, I asked. Um, I went. I wanted to show up for the commissioners' meeting. I showed up early. Um, Kelly let me up in the office and we were talking and I was just saying, is there any way we can make this simple? We got to simplify the financial policy procedures. We're going to write six, maybe 12 checks. Let's say we're going to write 13 checks in one year. We don't need a 37 page document. We don't have a shovel in the ground. We don't have any of that stuff going. So I personally asked as a board, as the chair, asked Kelly if she could help us out. We've been working on this six months in a very short period of time, she came back with something that I think the board needs to let her explain. And Kelly, could you explain it, please? Yes, that sounds good. Oh, shoot, can I screen share, Janet? Uh, uh, Ken has the controls. Okay. Or the power. He has the power. Oh, great. Thanks. Tell me, uh, security. There's yeah, go it. to security and there should be a let others share. Share screen. Here you go. Okay. Okay. So, you want to mention, and this, this came organically after we had our last conversation. Um, I realized these, the financial policies that we had were really good, but they were difficult to read. I own maybe a little bit type A perspective because the formatting was kind of difficult. So from the get-go, I, I, I knew it was minor, but I was like, oh, I wish I could fix this formatting. So the bulk of the changes are effectively formatting. The meat and potatoes of what is there is 
what has always been there. So there are three different documents that were included in your meeting materials. The first one is the one that's up on the screen and that was called full financial policies. And all that this is, is the financial policies that Brian and the committee had put together done up in a different format. And what I did was I took those and I started to highlight in gray the sections that we didn't necessarily need right out of the gate, that didn't effectively hit what we were right now. And the idea was, is that we don't have to do everything all at once. We can slowly implement these financial policies in a way that makes sense for you. And then we can, we can build on what we've adopted as we know more about how our organization is gonna expand. Um, so then from there, I took the larger financial policies and cut out all the sections that I had highlighted. So these are the ones that I propose that we include right now for potential, have our uh, attorney review it and then potential adoption. And these are effectively with my opinion and our attorney might feel differently, but what we need right now for who we are as an organization right now. And I can go into these in a little bit more detail, um, but then I propose that we slowly implement the rest of the policies as we need. So we look at a phased approach for implementing the financial policies. So looking at those initial financial policies, which is about eight pages, and then we turn and start looking at our board policies. And this is gonna answer a lot of the questions that we've been um, debating over the last few meetings. You know, what's, the, what's our quorum requirements? What are the, what are the different um, board positions? What are they responsible for? Make sure we have a conflict of interest policy. Those sorts of things can all be included in our board policies. And then once we get those adopted, we can turn and start looking at the other additions to the financial policies that were removed. So I broke them up into four different rounds and what I saw as um, when we might need those potential policies. So the first one looking at investments and then reserve and contingency, we will wanna look at those things pretty quick because we will have some dollars. Um, I know that we, uh, with, our, with our math, with the IGA, with the COG, we'll have about two and a quarter years worth of, uh, of funds to, to pay the COG for their services. But in the meantime, we will have some monies that we need to figure out what we are doing with. And then for round two, looking at our auditing policies and long range financial policy. And then we start in round three, looking at more of our capital. So. I'm hoping by the time that we get to round three, we'll have a better idea of who we are as an organization, if we're gonna be that policy board that Denny mentioned, or if we're actually going to be owning and operating the sewer infrastructure as a board. And if we are, then we will definitely need these capital improvement policies. And if we're not, then it might be, might be a moot point. And then looking into round four, talking about fidelity bonding and revenue for fees and charges. So. Really all this is, is just breaking out the, the long financial document that we had before into just a phased approach for implementation. But at that, I'm happy to walk through the, the smaller document or the larger document either way. Anybody have any questions? Uh, so you took out the capital improvements or the capital outlays or whatever it is, but we're gonna be purchasing uh, land, if I'm not mistaken, that that's gonna be part of it. And that would, wouldn't that be in part of capital outlays or is that gonna be part of investments? Uh, that, that would be. Generally, land, I don't believe is considered capital. I think it's considered investment. Somebody who is a little bit more in the weeds might know, but I actually, we won't, the sewer authority won't be purchasing that land. Right. It will be through ARPA dollars from Marion County. Now who receives those, that land in the end to actually operate the, the sewer treatment plant is the, the question of the day. Uh, obviously we need to work through with whether or not we're gonna be doing the city's owning and operating on behalf of the sewer authority, or if it's just gonna be the sewer authority as we already, as we had thought before, where the sewer authority owns and operates, 
that it's just a question we haven't fully fleshed out. We were we had had discussions about the the cities individually, but no matter what, we are have to have some sort of district to accomplish that. So that's my long way of saying. Don't know yet. Don't know yet. <laughs> Yeah, but we should though. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Ron, uh, I agree with Denny uh, from listening to um, Brian Nicholas that they're going to be doing a, a purchasing. Marion County will be, uh, they'll be handling the funds. They'll get it all set up and running and then they'll turn it over to the city. That's my understanding. Uh, so I don't want to get ahead. Uh, and, and get all this documentation implemented before we even need it. And so this is a living document. We can add to it, we can take away from it. Um, but I think that if we send the short version off to the attorney and let them look at it and go and, and we if, if we do that it'll get back in time and we still have to decide on the 12th it'll get back in time so we could vote on it in our next board session and i think we if we can get some of this stuff behind us you know our communication is is for the communities um town halls or whatever. I don't want to get ahead of any of this stuff, but I think it's important that we look at this stuff, make some uh, decisions. We can add to this. This is a live document, uh, a living document. So that's my opinion. Uh, well, Ron, to your point, this phased approach too is, is all very moldable as well. If we want to look at the capital earlier, that's absolutely fine. We'll find that document. Probably not the fastest way. We can also find out from Brian Nicholas, Public Works. There's, you know, they're supposed to be putting or hiring somebody to work with us to keep us informed. Is it? Isn't that the way I heard it, Kelly? Yeah. They're working on hiring a project manager right now who would be specifically for this project being that interconnect between the sewer authority and uh, the engineering firm that we are we are working on getting a contract for as well. So yeah. there's a lot of influx. So now we have time to do our 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 the contract with COG. We have time to to send the, that off to the attorney, send send off the financial uh, the short version, simplified version of financial policies and procedures. We can um, work on our board policies and procedures. Uh, we can review that. We do have a, a work session on the 9th of September uh, in the morning that we could um, work on the, the board policies. Um, and I think that in the meantime, Okay, I was going to keep going, but <laughs> you can, I, I really think I myself personally, my opinion is to send these two uh, topics off to the attorney. Ken, may I make a Yes, suggestion? go ahead. Perhaps we ought to send both iterations off to the attorney and let, let the attorney opine on what he thinks is most appropriate for an organization our size and complexity. Well said, thank you. Agreed, yeah. Okay. Um, do we have a census voter, you know? I agree. A census that we, or a consensus? Consensus. We have no census. <laughs> How about senseless? Yeah. Well, no, we don't want to do that. <laughs> uh, okay. Do we have a. You're not hearing any conversation to the uh, opposition of that. So perhaps we could just move. 
send them both off. Tim, where'd you go? I'm right here. Okay, I don't see you, so that's fine. Okay. <laughs> it, hey, there we go. Kelly, yeah. magic. <laughs> Does everybody agree to send it off? Send both versions off? Yeah, both. Yeah. Good. Got mine, bud. Got mine. Works fine by me. Okay. Um, I got to start watering early. What time does attorney get in? <laughs> Ross, that's his name. Ross. Ross Williamson, yeah. Yes, I'll call Ross in the morning. Um, feel free, Ken. Feel free to have him call me if he has questions. I I have a good relationship with Ross. Uh, maybe we gotta just do a three way conversation. Oh, that's fine too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, be well, I, I have a slam day Ross. tomorrow, but you what? I have a slam day tomorrow, so maybe not tomorrow. But. I'll call him and just say, beware. Okay, do you need time to put it together? You email? No, you can send it out as is. I still have some section highlights, things like that, but it's fine. Would when, uh, Wednesday or Thursday be a better day? Yeah. Thursday? Yeah, Wednesday is probably fine. Uh, Wednesday, I got to go to mom's in the morning um oh well no 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 we'll uh, call we don't have to bug everybody we'll, we'll figure it out you and i all right i'll give you a jingle okay so, ken real quick in yeah. clarity uh, uh brian had arranged a meeting with carmichael and mm -hmm. scott dadson and amber matheson coming up for what was it uh wednesday so we're not going to be doing that one. Is that what I'm hearing now? Because we're sending these policies off to the attorney, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, but I, but talking to Scott about, well, I'll call, I'll call you tomorrow, McCray. What would be the best time? After 10. Okay. Late riser. <laughs> yeah. Increase hours. I wish that was the case. <laughs> um, Ray, will you cancel that? Thanks. I'll talk to I'll talk to Scott. I gotta talk to we'll talk to him. Um okay. So the board. The board policies and procedures draft. You just touched on that. Yeah. Then these are these are not ready for prime time. I'm going to be frank. But right. after we were putting together the financial policies, it just came to be. And the last few meetings, it came to be apparent that our finance, our board policies, really need to be looked at. So we have board policies that were approved in 2021, and. Um, they, they were pretty good and that they hit on a lot of these points, but once again, they just don't hit on all of the points and they're, they're missing some chunks. And there's some things in there that are not necessarily how we actually do things. It's how they're in the policy, but not how we have practically been making things happen. So I started putting together a new updated board policies and procedures with the new formatting and trying to hit on all of the points that were included in the prior as well as what I felt like we're missing. Um, but I, like I said, these are not ready for prime time, but they, they do kind of cover just general governments, the quorum issues. Um, and then I'll just kind of scroll through all of them. They'll have some more specifics on the different positions. So what the chairperson does, what the vice chairperson does, what the secretary's role is, the treasurer's role is. Um, the communications chair. And then there's a section about presiding officer because of course the presiding officer could be the chairperson or the vice chairperson or whomever makes sense if the both of them are missing from that meeting. Then it'll specify the different meetings that we have, which goes to Brian's point about the administrative work sessions, what we've been calling them on Friday morning. So this would kind of codify all of our meetings, what the point of them is, those sorts of things. 
So maybe because of the confusion, I'll kind of walk through them a little bit. So we have three different kinds of meetings right now on the books. That's not to say we couldn't amend that, but that's really what we've been practically doing. So we have our regular meetings, which are the first Monday of the month at six o'clock. And those are our meetings where we are actually taking action. So those are our, we have something on the agenda that we want to approve and move forward. Then we have board work sessions, and those are currently scheduled for the third Monday of the month at six o'clock. And those are meant to be when we are fleshing out, this is like this one right now, where we're fleshing out the details of particular policies, we're wanting to get them ready for prime time for an actual approval. And then we have the administrative work sessions, and those are not necessarily meant to be board work sessions, but they're we had made them public sessions, public work sessions, because we didn't want to disclude any board members who wanted to attend. So the idea behind those Friday morning meetings was that they were for staff direction, um, guidance to staff, prepare for upcoming agendas. Um, they're open to all sewer authority members and the public, but the sewer authority members are not required to attend. So basically the two types of meetings that sewer authority board members are required to attend are your evening meetings, your regular sessions on the first Monday and your work sessions on the third Monday. Um, then it spells out executive sessions, special meetings, emergency meetings, what the process would be. There's also a section for a board retreat as well, which I do feel like is a very useful tool that we could consider having in our, in our toolbox for fleshing out big picture issues, talking about some of the, the, the who we are, who we wanna be, what our work plans are, those kinds of discussions are good for a board retreat. And then having that the sewer authority has a calendar scheduled each year. Um, maybe you'll appreciate this with some potential for holidays, how we work around holidays. <laughs> the goal to have at least half a month in, in the summer off, the week after, prior to Christmas and between Christmas and New Year's, all that fun stuff. Um, Details on location and manner, we will probably need to have that conversation about when we start holding our meetings in person again, because our IGA between the cities does designate that we will have our, our meetings at a alternating locations. Um, so we can talk about all those things as we're working through these, these board policies. Then it's got the particulars on the agenda and the order of business on agendas. I'm just gonna go a little faster. Uh, particulars on public comments, questions from the public, how those are addressed. Deliberations, motions and voting. So how each of the members deliberate, how motions are held, voting, amendments to motions. Um, ethics and conflicts of interest. This is the most rough draft portion. So please excuse me. I just stole a lot of the language from the financial policies. Nice. No, nice. And duplicate. Well, no, uh, nice. Thank you. And then media relations and outside statements. So this is would be our policies regarding who gets to talk to the media, what gets to be said, um, statements to outside organizations, how that how that can be played out, and then uh, specifics on interactions with staff. This will be pretty applicable. So this will be basically codifying that the supervision of staff would be delegated to the chair and the vice chair, um, and that day-to-day -day direction and tasks are not the responsibility of the board. Um, so those sorts of things. And then policy enforcement, so how the sewer authority board can enforce the rules. So, I mean, it seems like a lot, and it is, but it, it really is important to have good fleshed out understanding of how you operate as an organization. And a lot of this is detailed nuance, I realize. But the faster that you can decide how you're gonna operate, decide on these decisions, on how, what kind of meetings you hold, when the meetings are held, how you, what the agenda looks like, the faster we can move on to the more important things because we've made these decisions on the administrative stuff. So that's what I recommend. 
I'm going to clean these up a little bit better. And then I propose that an upcoming work session, probably the one in September, um, we look at these more thoroughly. September 9th. Is that the, the administrative, the morning, the Friday morning? Yes. Okay. So that is a question. If, if the board wants to see, <coughs> looking at these kind of policy, like directional type things at those sessions, or if they would rather they have them at the, at the more mandatory evening work sessions, that's totally up to, to you, how you operate. But. I would appreciate them at the, at the main work sessions on that Monday. I'm also confused on my calendar. It says there's a board meeting on the 19th, not the 12th. Which, which is it? Mine as well. Thank you, Brian. Because that's what we're discussing right now because of the fifth Labor Day. Were, were we going to wait all the way to the 19th or were, were we going to address? You want to wait to the 19th? Have well, that's what, that is what we had had in the approved calendar. That's not to say we can't amend it, but they're right. It was on the 19th. Yeah, it was on the 19th, but that's what we were discussing or talking uh, about earlier. Excuse me, Ken. Um, I've actually told a couple of people from the IDANA area who were interested in attending our work sessions and uh, our regular sessions um, that the dates that are established now are the real dates for the month of September. So, um, Hey. I just assumed that, that that we had actually made that decision a couple of weeks back. Anyway, um, it, that's fine, Denny. I mean, yeah, you got commitments, and so we got to honor them. That's fine. We can leave it to the nineteenth. And uh, I don't know what the process I think that would give it. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kelly. Oh, I was just. I think it will also give our attorney a couple of weeks to get back to us on their comments. So it's probably a good thing, anyway. Okay. okay. Because then they can have two weeks to review. The board can have it a week in advance and feel comfortable enough to make a decision on the 19th. So what do we want to do on the 9th? Is our Friday scheduled a minute? Do we need it? It would be setting the agenda for the 19th is what I would assume. Yeah, all I have written down for in my notes was to just review the attorney comments and give direction to send a board for approval. Let me make a note here. So if we do want to have it, um, it would just be to look at the attorney comments. Thank you, Larry. Um, September 9th. Any other comments? So those of us who can't make it on the night, does that mean we don't have input or what? Are we gonna get it like on the seventh so we could send notes for the ninth discussion? What, what does that look like? We can send the agenda or... No, I'm talking the, the document that Kelly just showed us. Well, that's gonna be sent out as soon as she gets that done. Um, to the review it, comment, the attorney comments. The attorney comments for the ninth. I don't. Um, that's not on the. That's not on the um, administration policies, though. On how the boards run, is it? That's just on the no, finance. Just the finances and, and the, I think, the contract. I think what Brian's asking is, um, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, is when are we going to get the modified document that Kelly's talking about? And when, if we can't be at the meeting, when can we get our comments um, and concerns in writing so it can be discussed? And I'm assuming so we'll have a discussion. Here's what, if, that's, if it's helpful, here's what I'm seeing. So today is the 29th. We get the draft of the IGA to the COB and the financial policies to our attorney this week. Mm -hmm. The attorney has until I would say the ninth to get us comments. Then we would get those comments out and as well as an agenda to the sewer authority board in preparation for the 19th. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, 
hopefully I'll have some edits to the board policies and we can look at those board policies as well. On the next. I get it. Thank those you. aren't ready for our attorney yet. I get it. Thank you. Made perfect sense. So on the night, the only thing that we'll be doing is making sure we got those, those, those directions or those edits from our attorney and then putting together the agenda and the other little administrative stuff we've got to talk about. So the policy and board rules will not be discussed until that meeting. Until the 19th? Yes. I mean, that's up to you, but yeah, that's what I'm proposing. Yeah. Okay. That's Sounds fair. It gives you a little time. That makes sense, Brian. That gives her a little time. It looked like it was a lengthy document, and then it's going to take some time to to edit. So, is it going to be in Google Docs that I can read it in Google Docs and make comments there? I honestly had not gotten that far. Um, I'm open to what the board would like to see. I had envisioned. Um, through and kind of talking it out um, at a board work session where we could like talk about each section, what it means, does that make sense, make edits at the board work session. Um, but I'm open to having comments like we did with the financial policies. It certainly speeds things along if people can look and provide comments or questions beforehand. Um, yeah, I like the idea that we all discuss it in a group in a work session. Um, so the next work session, we're working on grants and policies. Is that correct? I, we haven't discussed grants yet. So we need to, we will the time, we need to address the board policies and procedures before we start on grants and get those um, finaled. Um, Isn't our grants timeline a little bit more pressing than our, we have policies and procedures, right? They're already on the web page. Yeah, There's job descriptions on the web page. Those are, those are there. Can't we function under those until we get grants up and running? Our grants deadline is the 30th of December. Well, the grants are going to be worked on with COG and they're going to review and see what's available. And I think in the meantime, we can work on these board policies and procedures. Um, we have I'll talk with McCray tomorrow. We'll find out about timeline on grants and um, We'll send out an email to the board. Um, Excuse me, Ken. Yeah. Do, don't we have a Ford grant in the process at this point already? Uh, or are we just still talking about it? We're talking about it. And okay. it's, a, it's a simple, it's a, well, I don't know how simple it is, but it's a grant. Okay. And um, I know it was five thousand dollars was the last thing I remember in terms of value. So that's McCray, a good way to start. Yeah, McCray, what do you think? Uh, so Silas, um, our grant writer, is today. He spent some time looking at the Ford family because I just said to him, "Let's get that in place for you all, so that we have something." Um, depending on not having any kind of other activity with you yet. I know there's been some discussion. You all haven't started a Ford family yet. I reached out to both um, Brian and Sarah and that application hasn't begun, but there's not too much to it. It's $5,000. Kelly was referencing you all having like a, um, a retreat and a work session. And that might be a great way to capture bringing in someone who could facilitate that meeting for you all in early spring. Um, you know, once we get through adopting um, board policy and financial policies, that could be a really good time for you all to gather. Um, but I hope to have Silas come next month if our agenda works to be able to propose and start talking with you all about grants and visions and, and what you need funding for, right? There's a lot of pieces to this and you're just at the, you're just at the starting point of, of thinking about it. 
and we need to get some stuff behind us so we can move on with that. Yeah. So do you want to, is it, what'd you say the gentleman's name was? Stylus? Stylus. Stylus. Uh, is he plan on being on the 19th? He can be. Depending on what our schedule is like, you know, okay. we might want to put him later on the agenda for you okay. all to work through these other things first and then yes. have him provide a report of grants that he's been looking at and what they would provide and how that fits into, um, you know, short term and long term goals for the Zero Authority. So Kelly's going to work on getting putting that together. I'm not going to press her for have it done tomorrow. I appreciate her putting in all the time and effort on the items. I'm sure uh, Larry will help. <laughs> She'll have the eraser. Um, and then get that going. And they'll get us get it out to us in a timely manner. But uh, we got to get this stuff off to the attorney and get his comments back. And that's what we're going to do. Any, any other comments? Oh yeah, you know, I just uh, I just did that sheet for the quarterly report, you know, and it's more so just so it makes that IGA auditable. And so at the next uh, work session, I'd just like to, you know, just put it out there. It's a one pager, you know, it would be a yeah. very cool view. And that'd be- But just so you guys have your eyes on it. So that way, you know what we're filing away. Okay. So our next work session isn't until October, right? Yeah, I think she meant our board session on the 19th. So the, okay. the quarterly report will have the COG help us with, with the first one. Um, it's not, it, like, like Larry was mentioning, it's a one pager and frankly, you've not done any spending yet. Um, so there's not a lot to it. And then, um, we'll have the board look at it and potentially approve it so it can get submitted to the county which effectively just means that it'll get included with the IGA and our paperwork. So that way, if we do get audited, we can show that we're following the quarterly reports. And that's on the 19th. That's for the 19th. Is that good enough, Larry? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds good. Because then, uh, you know, with the first one coming up on October 15th, right. then, you know, like we could just show you what the form looks like at the 19th board session. And then on October 3rd, you know, we could see what it looks like filled out, you know, and then we can just file it away. And it's, it's a super quick review. Yes, it looked good. Anything else tonight? Um, oh, oh, um, the financial policies and procedures. Um, I would like to see Janet be one of the signers on there. Um, Tim's out of town. I'm out of town. Janet's there. Janice has a, uh, Janet has access to City Hall. Uh, she is on council. And Brian's there in Gates. Janet's in Mill City. And we can always use Tim and I as backup, but I'd like to see Janet on there as a, as a signer. Yeah. And so... If, have we, did you do anything about the amount? Uh, uh, um. Let's look at that. So the three positions that are authorized signers are the, it's right here, the board chair, the vice chair, the treasurer, and or the secretary. So two of those are the authorized signers in the current policy. Okay, good. Uh, I just think it makes sense. Um, also, I see there's a a uh, a twenty five hundred dollar yeah yes I had highlighted it because we are discussing it but I did not make a change so I do want to note that it's up, currently for administ what we're considering administrative expenditures is anything up to twenty five hundred dollars as long as the expenditure is within the funds approved budget expenditure limits. So it would be approved in your budget and then you'd be authorized to spend the money without the board approval at 2,500. And then for board expenditures, it would be anything greater than 2,500 as currently written. 
but that can be amended um, to whatever makes sense and makes the board comfortable. We could also ask our attorney for some advice on that one as well. Yes. Um, does anybody have any opinions on that? About the amount, should it be less than twenty five hundred at this point? I don't. I don't think so. Um, I mean, if the explanation that Kelly just provided is sufficient for me, and the fact is, aren't we requiring two signatures on a check? Yes. Okay. So you've got that um, separate set of eyes as well as most of the stuff, as Kelly indicated, is gonna be discussed at the board level. So I don't have a problem with $2,500. Oh, I do. I, I do wanna clarify. So how it's written right now, which can be amended, is only one party is required to sign anything less than 2,500. So it'd be the board chair, vice chair, treasurer and or secretary are authorized to sign right. checks for electronic funds transfers up to 2,500 with no mention of the two signatures. The that's two not that's in. not an accurate representation of that, Kelly. All our checks require two signatures, all of them. Okay, well, as it's written, so we can all highlight that. This just amendment. says, this paragraph says that the two individuals can sign the check for an expenditure up to $2,500 as long as, it, as it's within the approved budget. It doesn't, you don't have to wait for a meeting to get it approved. Think of, uh, you know, something's been damaged and you need to get a replacement for it. It's already been budgeted into a line item. So the board chair and vice chair or the board chair and the treasurer can sign a check. So the individual who's tasked with it can go out and buy that piece and come back and do something for it do something with it. So work isn't interrupted waiting for a board meeting to happen to allocate resources. I recall one. Uh -huh. What would we have to replace? I, we, we're not going to own anything. Not for a while. For a long while. We don't have shovels in the ground. I understand it should be two signatures per check. I agree with that. That's why I'd like to have Janet in there because she's there locally and Brian's there locally. If it gets to the point where Brian has gone on vacation or Janet's gone on vacation, that's Tim and I just have to work it out. Um, I think the issue here, there's not an electronic tra transfer. You don't even sign a check. We'll send it, it to not you. use an electronic transfer unless the board has approved it. Thank you. We're gonna I, think, I think all of us are responsible enough to call the other person and make sure it's a good expenditure and we're not <laughs> overstepping. I, I mean, Yes. I would be paranoid enough that I would call Brian here in town and I just wouldn't do it, but that's me. Nobody has access to the checks. The checks are offsite, so I, I can't write a check. I'd have to go and cajole Stacy to give them to me out of the filing cabinet in Mill City. And I, I think that's where you know, <laughs> Janet comes into play uh, um, big time is because and we shouldn't be bothering Stacy. We shouldn't be bothering any of the Mill City staff. And if 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 Janet was contacted and say we need a check, she can get down there, meet uh, with Brian or whatever has to happen. And that way we're not bothering the staff in Mill City. And Janet so has why don't, so why don't you trust the treasurer with the checks? I mean no government official, nobody has ever allowed any official to take checks home in their personal home. Never happens. Why should we start well, now? Isn't that what Janet's going to do? Janet's not taking anything home. Nope. 
they are here with the city. So when we need something, I just would direct Stacy to get the checkbook out and a check. But he just said we shouldn't be bothering Stacy for checks. I, I'm confused. But I'm what? the I'm the Mill it's City not... representative, and so is Tim. So it's different if we come give them. I wouldn't go to Gates and ask ask Tracy to do something without going through you and asking you to do it. I don't feel that's my place to direct city staff. Well, I've spoken with Stacy a number of times. I think she recognizes who I am as the treasurer. But I'm not worried about that's who me. you are. You know, I'm that's... not worried about who you are if she recognizes you. I think it's just a nice way to say, Janet, uh, we need to get together and sign a check. And then she goes and gets them, comes back, you go to a desk or whatever, you get it all done, it's all over and done with. We're not bothering Tracy. Tim. If, Mayor. If we wanted, I mean... We got a little broom closet there that we could officially designate as an office for the sewer authority. And we could inside that, behind that locked door, have a little safe or something, and we could keep uh, that kind of stuff there, all the documents there. Uh, and I would say one reason we don't want the, the checkbooks going home, if there was anything to ever happen, to, re, to get them back uh, could be a, a difficulty or something. It's like, God forbid you were in an accident or something, Brian. Uh, but uh, access to things like that at some time uh, might be difficult. That's why we want to keep them at a central location or an office, I would think, as well, too. It's not a, a thing about personal responsibility, but if there was some uh, something that happened to, and you weren't around or whatever, we'd all, you know, we'd still need to have access to them. That's why I think a central location is good. Uh, I don't see uh, the need to even bother Stacy if we had our own little secure room or element there uh, for us to keep the checks. So, well. We're going to have to have this discussion too. But right now, Janet can go in there, have access, pick them up, um, work with Brian, and be a signer at the, the same time. And I think that's just good policy. Well, I'll tell you right now, Ken, I won't ever take them out of the office, and Stacy will be a witness. Yeah. To well, anything that's done or say staff. Check without whatever. everybody's permission. <laughs> hmm? I can't see myself writing a check for twenty-five dollars, let alone twenty-five hundred, without other people knowing. Yeah, it's just I can't it's, either. It's just not logic. It's just not the way things work. What's not the way things work? People don't just go in and write checks. It's it's just not the way things work. Well, we're, that's why we're having a discussion. We're making we're making everybody understand what what's going to happen. You know, we're not leaving any loose ends. Um, okay. Well, anything else on this agenda? A couple things that aren't on the agenda that I like the groups. Uh, reaction to. One is, I mentioned earlier tonight that there's a white paper and an FAQ paper on the uh, Google Drive regarding our attempt to start moving towards community communication. And I would, I would love to have you read those two pieces and, uh, and comment either personally to me uh, or on the drive, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, I have no editorial pride whatsoever. So uh, I'm just looking for help. Number two, um, I've been interacting with a couple of people online as I answer questions that come in on the site. Uh, and one is from a, a, a woman whose name is Rachel McIsaac, lives in the Gates area. Um, and she is just tremendous uh, to work with. She's, she's very interested in what's going on because their property sits immediately, um, I, I think on the east side of the land that potentially will be purchased by Marion County to serve as the treatment site. And, uh, 
And she lives Gates, in Gates or Idana? Gates or Idana? I'm sorry? You mentioned Gates. Yes. I, I'm sorry. I said Gates, I meant Idana. Okay. Forgive me. <laughs> um, so um, she's been, as I said, terrific to deal with. Uh, I know we, we still need at least one person uh, on the uh, Idana side in terms of another member, but I don't think it's my responsibility to recruit that person. Anybody have any ideas? Um, Tony, um, he was supposed to be on tonight. Um, something must have happened. Um, don't know what. Well, maybe I'll just I'll get a hold of Tony personally and, and chat with him about my interactions with uh, Rachel and see because the other individual that I answered several questions for who seemed to have an interest in the position has has not returned uh, emails for a month or more now. So. Yeah, um, you got Tony's email address. If sure. I, okay. Do you have his phone number, his cell number? No, I don't, but perhaps somebody can uh, text it to me. I'll text you his cell number. Okay. I thought someone from Idana was introduced to us at our last meeting on August 1st with Tony. Tony mentioned something. I don't think the, the person was there. No, that's the person I was interacting with uh, over several... Uh, uh, email um, back and forth, um, but he's never gotten back. At least to me, he may have. He may have inquired uh, about the position from from Tony. The other thing, uh, if you all would like to make a, a contribution to Sarah's uh, going away gift, um, as you all know, I wrote a, a letter of recommendation for Ken's signature. And we purchased a $200 gift card. Um, so if you're interested, let me know. Uh, it's taken care of. And that's the last you're going to hear from me about it. I'll just take care of whatever is left over. So don't worry about it. You Send can... me how much you want and an address, please. Well, uh, I, I can just tell you that, you know, one person has uh, provided uh, $50 and, uh, and I'll put in that much or more. So whatever you want to chew off from the rest of it is fine with me. It doesn't matter. And I, I, I can take Chime, I can take PayPal, I can take um, Venmo, and I can take Cash App. So let me know how you want to do it and I will, I will get you a method. Okay, Venmo, if you can just send that to me, I'll get you some money. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I don't know how to use Venmo. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you my information. You can send me some money too, Janet. Oh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> um, okay, anything else? Thank you, Danny, for that, that white paper and all that stuff. I think we're really, I'm really getting questions from my community uh, and their concerns. We need to hear from our communities. We need to do a communication. We need to get some of this stuff behind us. I'm way beyond what's on here, and I'm thinking communication. And there's a lot of questions out there. And yep. Uh, I'll just say this again. I think we need to meet in our communities. Not everybody has to be there. Some can be there by Zoom. But I think we need to meet in our communities. Our policy says we're supposed to meet in our communities and we need to live up to our policy. Now, that's yep. what I'm talking about because Janet has already contacted the church in Gates and we're trying to set up, we've talked about uh, the Zoom. Yeah. Why don't we just meet at City Hall in Gates? For regular meetings, that's a great idea, Brian. Um, I Just let me know when you want me up there. I've got, I've got uh, what am I thinking? I got a big monitor and the equipment to set up to do just what we're doing right now. We have a, a citizen here tonight. She's at every one of our meetings. Um, so just tell me when to be there. I'll be there early because I cushion time for technical errors or technical problems. So just let me know when and I will be there. We're also talking about town hall meetings. So a large group like you know at the Gates Church um, unless you got room for lots of people at City Hall, I hate to say I've never been to City Hall. But it, I think we could have our September 19th meeting in Gates. At least some of us can be there. September and we could take September 19th. Okay. That's 
almost a month away. It's a pretty good lead time. Does that work, yeah, Ron? Okay. Anne's riding with me. I got a key, so it's all good. Okay. <laughs> Are you sure they trust you with the key? I, I trust Brian more than I trust you. Oh, no, yeah. they don't, but that's all right. I got it anyway. <laughs> so what does everybody it's else think? <laughs> what does everybody else think about uh, the 19th? Be a Zoom meeting and or in person. Yep, and then maybe in October, if you want to um, um, have me move up to Detroit or Idana um, much after I think November, I'm not going to be willing to um, drive up there after dark. <laughs> well, we'll just, we can work on gates on the 19th and okay. um, go from there. It'd be a Zoom or in person. Okay. And Tim says he's not going to be available. Whatever. So can, we, can we have it the 12th? Oh, we're going to go The back. 12th is the first Monday, right? So. No, no, it's already on the calendar and we have people already planning to attend on the 19th. Denny has a couple of people, so I don't know that we should. No, we, I, we, I we can just, fix that. I, it's, if you want to change it. Is it board rules on the 19th? you're all broke up. I'm sure. I don't think I'll be able to make the 12th either. I'm sorry, I'm going to be out of town. <laughs> Jim said he's going to be out of town. You're all broke up. It sounds like the 19th it is. We'll get more done without Tim, Brian. So, okay. The 19th, we'll set up a Zoom meeting there, Zoom meeting or in person. Kelly, you good with that? Zoom, Larry? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be there in person if I can. Okay. Yeah, likewise. We okay. carpool. Yeah. That means I have to figure out how to hook up a camera. Okay, we can do that. I paid that work. We can have Tracy set it up before she leaves work on on uh, that day, just so okay. it's all ready for us to go. Okay, I, think, well, I can um, be there. Let me see. I'll arrange to I'll arrange to shift my schedule that day so I can be up to Gates by. Uh, I'll be up to Gates early, so if she doesn't have to come back. I think uh, it'd be nice to have a, we do have a public comment section, so yeah, we'll try and prime our public and. <laughs> okay. So anything else? All right, well, hearing nothing, um, I will be stopping the recording. We thank everybody. It is 7.40 p.m. August 8, 29, 2022. We thank everybody for being here. Janet, before you sign off, 